In this video, we're going to go over the array.reduce method and specifically, let's go into the training dojo at client side and go to this free problem here. Specifically, we're going to be going over five methods and filling them out and talking about them as we do. So let's go ahead and close this terminal. To get familiarized with the problem, go ahead and read this prompt here to the left. Let's start off with the very first one. So we have to sum an array and return zero if the array is empty. So we get an array of numbers. And before we even jump in there, let's run these tests to see that they are indeed failing. So each problem has, looks like two tests that we have to actually make pass. Okay, so in order to sum an array, this is a pretty trivial uh, problem. What we can do is just say, um, return array.reduce, and then we have the previous value and the current value. And we also have to give it an accumulator. So notice that it said it should return zero if the array is empty. So we'll start off at zero. And so when we first start, the previous value is just gonna be zero. And the current value is gonna be the first value of the index. So what we have to do is just say return previous plus the current. And so each time it'll iterate and move forward in the array and keep adding to that previous. You can also, instead of calling this previous, call this the accumulator because it's essentially just this value and we just keep adding to it as we go through. So let's run those tests and make sure that we've, we've got those working. And great, so we have the first two test cases passing. The next one is the product array. And so it's essentially the same exact thing as the sum array. So let's go ahead and copy this. But instead, what we have to do is multiply each value within the array. And so we can just change this to be a multiplication, but notice that it should return one if the array is empty. And even if it didn't say that, um, this wouldn't work, right? Because if we start the accumulator at zero, then that means that each time we'd multiply by zero because anything multiplied by zero is gonna be zero. And so let's change that to one rerun our tests and hopefully those pass as well. Great, okay. The next one is getting the largest number in an array. So it says it should return negative infinity if the array is empty, which is a good uh, tip for us in how to structure our array.reduce. So let's go ahead and create that general array.reduce structure. So we have the uh, previous and the current and we can also call this the max in this case uh, because that is what the value is going to be at each um, turn so actually let me just go ahead and comment that out and go over how to do this without using a array.reduce so that you can see um, the thought process behind that conversion so Usually what we do is we'd say let max equal to negative infinity. Um, and so what we'd want to do is go through the array. Um, zero, i is less than array dot length. We want to go through each element in the array and see if that current value at the array, so if array at i is greater than max, Right, or what we can do is just say, um, yeah, if array at i is greater than max, then what we can say is um, max is equal to array at i. And then we can just return um, max like this, right? So that just gives us the maximum. And so let's go ahead and convert that to an array.reduce. So here, um, the accumulator is going to be negative infinity. That is our base case. And then what we can do is just say return um, math.max between the maximum, so the current accumulator, and the current value. And that's pretty much it. So let's remove this up here. Go ahead and run that. And there we go. So that's working as expected. 
And as you might be guessing, the very next function here, min array, is just going to be the exact same thing. But rather than negative infinity, we have infinity there. Let's just change this variable to be min. And then use math.min on the two values there. So let's go ahead and run these tests again. And there you have it, ladies and gents. We have min array working as well. Now, finally, we have the final boss, which is the average array problem. But no worries. I believe in us and our capabilities of using array.reduce at this point. So let's see how we would solve this problem. So let's go ahead and set up our array.reduce like we always have. Give it a previous and the current value and build out that callback function and then give it the accumulator. So the accumulator is going to be zero initially, right? If we have no values in the array, then we should return zero. Um, but you also, the way you do average calculations, right? You just go through each value in the array, add them, and then divide by the length of the array. It's pretty straightforward. That's just how you get the average of a list of numbers. Um, and so let's start out at zero. And then what we can say is just say previous plot return um, prev plus cur. And so what this is going to give us is the entire sum of the array. And then we have to divide that by the array dot length. Um, but we can't stop there because this can be zero. The array dot length can be zero. So we'd be doing um, division right on uh, where the um, denominator is zero, which is invalid. You cannot divide um, with zero. So what we can say is if that's an invalid number, if there's nothing in the array length, then just return zero as our base case. And that should hopefully work. <laughs> Alrighty, that's the array.reduce easy uh, exercises. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and try out some of the other exercises. I know that you'll have a blast working on those by yourself. So good luck and happy coding.